It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the uh, Thursday, December 22nd edition of the show. Hopefully everybody is having a really, really good Christmas break already. That's what I'm hopeful for. Uh, We're not going to spend long on this today. This is going to be a rather short show. Uh, Let me first go on and tell you, of course, the show is brought to you by BetUS. It's America's premier online sportsbook, fast payouts, incredible customer service, uh, the best bonuses in the game. Uh, Go and check them out at the link in the description below. You will get a $50 free play with no deposit required. It does not get better than that. Along with that, I host the BetUS College Football Show. It's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a link in the description for that as well. Please go subscribe. Tell your friends about it. That's where you're going to get the best bets for us. It's been a really long year. I am, you know, we're going to go over the National Signing Day stuff. I'm not going to spend long on that uh, because it's Christmas. I mean, what the hell? But I, going from hosting a show with Chris, where we were doing it live together, to hosting it with Chris when he was on the phone with me, to hosting the show by myself, it's been a pretty difficult year to be able to get the hang of, because I'm also doing the Bait US show, I'm also doing another job, I also have a toddler at the house, and a senior in high school, that is my daughter. Uh, it, it's, it's a whole process. It's kind of difficult. But you guys have certainly made it worth it this year. The feedback has been fantastic. I appreciate all of you immensely for trekking along with me over the years. Uh, Winning Cures Everything has been going since 2016. It started audio only. Now, this is all off the cuff. I have no notes right now. I just I thought it would be a good time to come on and, you know, just talk for a minute. Uh, just discuss a few things. But... Uh, it started audio only in 2016. We moved to YouTube in 2018. We hooked up with uh, uh, with a a city, <laughs> basically a tourist thing, uh, back in 2018. Rolled with them through 2019. Started with uh, SBR in 2020, and then I moved to BetUS in 2021. And it has just been a roller coaster. Uh, but through it all, the constant has been winning cures everything. And the reason why that has been a constant is because of you guys that listen and chime in and share the show out and tell your friends about it. And you help continue the conversation each and every time out. And it's, it's worth it for me to continue to do this. uh, Even though it does take up a considerable amount of time because uh, you guys are a lot of fun and I enjoy this. And it's, it's really sometimes the one thing in this world that I feel like I have control over. And I know that that sounds kind of weird, right? Uh, sometimes you being a husband, your, your wife can kind of run the show with a lot of things when it comes to work, uh, when you work for somebody else, you don't really get to run the show and that's okay. Like we, we fully expect that while I do have uh, a lot of flexibility with my other jobs, um, and this one, I can decide when I release a show, I can decide when I go live, I can decide whatever I want to do. Um, I have complete and total creative control over winning cures everything and that cannot be understated but here's what i need from you guys going into 2023 i need some feedback uh, for you guys to tell me what it is that you enjoy the most about the show what you would like more of when you would like me to go live uh, so that we can get more people involved during the live shows would would you rather i record them as i do most of the time where i record it you know one point and then i go live but all right, I premiere the shows at a certain point. Would you prefer that? Or would you prefer it where it's more interactive, the way that it used to be, like during uh, during the pandemic when everybody was quarantined at home and Chris and I went live for like an hour every day and it was just a constant chat back and forth where we were just having fun and, and ripping jokes and having, having a good time. Um, I would have to figure out how to do that, how to fit it into the schedule, et cetera. But I want what you guys want. I want to have fun. This show should be a good time. It should be informative. I should be throwing out a whole lot of, uh, you know, awesome things. But at the same time, like I, beyond informative, I just want it to be entertaining. And that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm trying to be. I'm trying to get better every single day. Hopefully I do that with the BetUS show. But I also plan to do that with 
winning cures everything as we go along. So the Christmas season is always a little bit crazy. Uh, I've pre-recorded some shows, uh, the the bowl previews, etc. Next week I will be traveling. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do other stuff other than the two Bet US shows on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I will be there for those. But other than that, uh, it's going to be a little bit of mayhem. I got a lot of families to hit. So when you get married, it's it's like that. So my wife and I have celebrated six years together now. Uh, at least married. We, we dated for four years before that. So 10, I guess, at this point. So yeah, quite, quite a cold, you know, pretty long time. And then, of course, my daughter graduates in May, and that's going to be uh, quite a bit of... Uh, uh, I don't know how I'm going to feel. I don't feel like I'm old enough to have a child that's in college. But I am turning 40 in January, so it is what it is there. Let's uh, let's talk for a minute, now that we're on to minute six here. Let's talk about the uh, recruiting day, National Signing Day. Turn on the music a little bit so you guys can get some mood stuff going in the background. You know what? We're going to stop that one. Let's do the chill one in the background. Uh, let's look at National Signing Day. You know what? I'm going to pull up 247 on the screen, and that way you guys can see it and go along with me. We'll talk about winners and losers. Uh, I'll pull up Andrew Ivan's article, and uh, and I'm going to pull up the team rankings. I'm going to tell you, uh, I sent out a tweet, and my gosh, did it get absolutely blitzed. I mean, my God, Notre Dame fans were just irate with me because I said that the most surprising team of the day, the best day thus far at the point that I had sent that out was Oregon. And they were so, so mad about Peyton Bowen. And I said, it's not just money. Like, you have to have the relationships in place first in order to offer the money. You can't just go and buy kids. It's not like that. But man, do they disagree with that. Can't even begin to tell you why. Alabama had the number one class, number two, Georgia, number three, Texas, number four, Miami, five, Ohio State, six, LSU, number seven, Oregon, eight, Oklahoma, number nine, Notre Dame, number 10, Clemson, no, excuse me, number 10 was Tennessee, number 11, Clemson, Florida came in at 12, Penn State, 13, A&M, 14, USC, 15, and then South Carolina, 16, Michigan, 17, TCU, 18, Auburn jumped in at 19, and Florida State, 20. Uh, we'll just go through that uh, that top 20 there. Um, Alabama, obviously, six five-star recruits. They had six different guys, I think, that were number one at their position in the country. That's insane. I mean, that's just absurd. Nick Saban is not slowing down. I find it... Uh, it's not funny. It's uh, informative, because we all know that there are staff changes that will be coming eventually. And yet... They've got the the type of program built that they're not going to have any opt-outs for the bowl game, even though they've got multiple first-round guys on the team. They want to close this thing out the right way, and that is commendable, for sure. But man, they brought in some dudes this go-round. Edge rushers, offensive tackles, they got some, I mean, just everything. Everything in this class that they could have possibly wanted, they got it. And, uh, and they haven't even started in the portal yet, so we'll see what ends up happening with that. Georgia, I mean, does what Georgia always does. Uh, they did not bring in a quarterback this time. Kirby Smart's comments were pretty entertaining. Um, yeah, one, they like their quarterback room already. They didn't have to bring one in. Uh, number two, why would you go and get a high school quarterback that you have to try and develop when the guys that you're going to win with are not freshmen? Like, the guys that you're going to win with are upperclassmen, and you just go in the portal. He said, because there's a ton of guys in the portal now. Why would you go recruit a guy when you could just portal them in? Like a bunch of them are going to leave. Texas had a really big day. Uh, signed quite a few guys. Number f uh, they are they've got four five star recruits here, uh, but they did bring in eight three stars. So guys that you got to develop pretty good. Miami uh, a monster day, even though the season was not great. You knew Mario Cristobal was going to do this. Uh, Ohio State very very nice. The the surprising one again uh, to me was Oregon had a lot of guys that flipped their direction. Now Peyton Bowen looks like he might be going to Oklahoma at this point. Who knows what's going to happen there. Uh, but this is why it's okay if you are a recruit to wait until February to sign. You don't have to sign anywhere right now. This is the early signing period. But And yet 92% of the top 247 have already signed their letters of, in, uh, excuse me, their letters of intent, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, yay, yay. Uh, Oklahoma, a good day for a program that really, really needed it. Let's uh, let's pull up the player rankings and we'll see who all has gone places, etc. Cormani McCain, um, McLean, excuse me, the top cornerback. Um, his mother said he was not going to sign. 
So, of course, Colorado jumps in and starts making calls with him. Deion Sanders getting his name in the news. Everybody started talking about it. I think it's still more likely that he ends up at Miami. There is some Alabama smoke here. Um, I don't know what the deal is. Okay, My, my guess is uh, that uh, he's going to get the bag from somebody, but we'll see. USC got Malachi Nelson and Zachariah Branch. Um, not bad. I mean, when you got the offense, you got the offense. It's going to keep going. Uh, Nico Iamalieva from Tennessee. He's up to number four. He signed. Uh, Caleb Downs, I think, is the most field-ready guy. He is the most ready to step in and start immediately. He is a safety uh, from uh, Georgia, and and he is going to play at Alabama. He's already signed. Jackson Arnold, the quarterback, uh, has already signed with Oklahoma, so that's good. Francis uh, Mwagoa, Mwagoa? I, that kind of guy, you know, from IMG, he's going to Miami. He's already signed. David Hicks, the defensive lineman uh, out of Katy, Texas, is going to Texas A&M, but he has not signed yet. So that's a that's a thing. Keon Keeley, the edge, uh, he's going to Alabama. The quarterback, Dante Moore from Detroit, Michigan, uh, he's going to UCLA, and he has already signed. Caden Proctor, the offensive tackle. Guy that flipped from Iowa is going to Alabama. Damon Wilson signed with Georgia. Uh, he's from Florida. Peyton Bowen has not signed. He flipped from Notre Dame to Oregon. Now it looks like Oklahoma might be in on him. Jurian Dickey, uh, the wide receiver from California, from Palo Alto, uh, he is going to Oregon. Uh, Nicholas Harbor has not signed. He's not actually committed or anything. He is taking his time. He's he's from the uh, the DMV, right? Um, I'm real curious about him. It, 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 all the crystal balls have got him going to South Carolina. Why on earth would he not go in and, and sign? Hmm, making his choices. I, I could see that. Alabama did get uh, James Smith and uh, Quay Russaw from Carver over in Montgomery. Uh, two just massive five-star guys. James Smith is what Alabama was missing big time on that defensive line this year. It, if Pete Golding sticks around, he's going to have to swap up some of the uh, schemes, some of the coverages that he had. Um, that defensive line just there were there were times where he had Will Anderson as a like one of like two down linemen. It was just it made no sense against the teams that you were playing against because my God, everybody that they played could run the ball. So when you got big old offensive linemen like that going up against like Will Anderson is an edge rusher, a rusher. He's a linebacker for all intents and purposes. So. Just a mess. Just an absolute mess. Uh, and then we'll go through. Desmond Ricks has not uh, signed yet, but he was 100% crystal balled to LSU early on Wednesday. Now it is 80% to Alabama. So Alabama not done yet. Kind of kind of surprising. Uh, so Desmond Ricks from, uh, from IMG looks like Alabama likely to get him 80% crystal balls to Alabama on that one. Uh, Ruben Owens, the top running back in the country, flipped from Louisville after uh, Scott Satterfield left. Uh, he is going to Texas A&M. And then Justice Haynes, the uh, number 25 player in the country, the running back, is headed to Alabama as well. Uh, on this, let's see. Yeah, we got six that have got uh, here. Let's look at all the predictions for Desmond Ricks here. Steve Wiltfong this morning said Desmond Ricks to Alabama. Blake Alderman from Florida's uh, Swamp 247. Knowles 247 uh, on November 6th that had Desmond Ricks to LSU. But we have got, looks like we have got Alabama getting Desmond Ricks. So that is going to bump up that class even more. Just a ridiculous amount of talent for Alabama in this one. Uh, when you start looking at the top G5 programs, that's always a lot of fun to pay attention to. UTSA, I think, is the biggest one. Let's look at the CUSA. UTSA here, uh, they are number 58 overall in the composite rank. And I think that's the, the most important one aside from the other one. But when you look at the AAC, Memphis, and now it, it, we're not going to count UCF and Houston because they will be in the Big 12 next year. So Memphis currently sitting at number 64 in the composite. They are right behind UTSA. So UTSA, the number one class in the G5, Memphis, number 64. Uh, they are number two in G5. Can Ryan Silverfield do anything with what he's got here? And that, I think that's the biggest question. A lot of three stars here. A lot of transfers coming in already. You got Xavier Hill, offensive lineman from LSU. You got Reed Bauer, a punter from Arkansas. Chandler Martin from East Tennessee State. 
And you've got uh, R.J. Adams, another interior offensive lineman, 6'3", 326, coming from Georgia Tech over to Memphis. So the transfer portal being nice to the Memphis Tigers as well. Um, I'm real curious. Real curious about these guys. Real curious about what Memphis is going to be going forward. Tulane, another good day. Uh, not bad. Not bad. UCF, a, a huge day. Got two four-stars. Houston, the same. Two four-stars. It's, uh, it's a good Good time to be alive in national recruiting for sure. All right, it's a it's a shorter show, but we're gonna go and, yeah, we're gonna go on and call this. Go check out Flow Sports. Go check out Valtimary Surf Company, a collegiate town apparel company. Uh, the links are in the description for those. Go and check out the Bet US College Football Show. Go and check out WinningCuresEverything.com. Subscribe everywhere that you need to subscribe. Of course, podcast and on YouTube, and uh, make sure and hit that like button for me. Uh, but that's going to wrap this up. Uh, this will be the last one, at least until Christmas, and probably through the new year. I'm not sure what my schedule is going to be. I might be down in New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. We'll see. We'll see. I'm still trying to make up my mind about that one. And so I, I have uh, I have the option. I just have not gone yet. So, all right. Let's wrap it up. You guys have been fantastic this year. Absolutely fantastic. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate all of you. Uh, I hope that I make that clear with every show, but you guys really do make the show. You really make this worth it for me. Uh, I enjoy doing this, and hopefully you enjoy the fact that I do it. Uh, that's <laughs> that's all I'm hoping for. But yes, I need the feedback. Tell me, what do you want more of as we go into the new year? Do you want more expansion talk? Do you want more just basic college football news? Would you prefer that I turn this into just a news channel? Uh, what, what, what would you like from me? Because I'm willing to... Uh, adapt. I'm willing to change up the show as we go along. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good New Year's. It's going to be a good year period, 2023. I am excited. All right. With that said, everybody, throughout the holidays and on, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week and beyond. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.